steps up here into a higher league against uh, Russia's tough, strong Sergei Tatavosian. He can fight. This is a meaningful 12-round contest. It should tell us plenty more about Froch's world title ambitions because confidence, Jim, he doesn't lack. Yeah, that is certainly the case, and uh, I like the way he puts himself on the line before every fight. He tells you what he expects of himself, and he wants to produce that. The awkwardness here will be the southpaw jab. We worried in previous fights against southpaw with his low-held left hand. Would that let him down? It didn't against Brian McGee. It did once or twice, I suppose, but he overcame that. But I would say, without doubt, he is world-class. Yeah, good performance, that against Brian McGee, who he finally knocked out after some tough spells. Also broke his thumb in that fight. He's had hand problems before, Froch. And occasionally can start slowly, like he did in this very ring against Ruben Grunewald about 14 months ago. Well, he's certainly thinking his way around in the first minute or so. Last time out against Tony Dodson, I think he fancied a quick finish and he went out looking for it. But he's paying this fellow a bit more respect. He's having a good look at him, picking the punches nicely now. Clinical left hook got rid of Tony Dodson and sort of cleaned up domestically for Froch at that sort of level. Tatavosian brings a great deal into the ring. Tonight. He really pushed Howard Eastman back in January 2004 down in uh, Dagenham when they fought. He's never been stopped. Good chin, good all round ability. He has spent a lot of his career at middleweight. I don't know if that could be a slight problem. I wonder if he probably can still do middleweight. But this is impressive stuff uh, from Trotch, nothing reckless. Uh, it's usually his, his left hand's down, but I don't like seeing it. But uh, his reflexes are good. He's confident with his chin. And fighters who take a few are certainly more exciting to watch. They're positive. Faster start than usual, this, from Carl Frotch. It's like reddening on the nose and the left eye for Froch. It's a beautiful right hand, bang on the chin, so that's, a, that's been a tester for Tadevosian. Took it well. Both men have good chins in there. Froch feels that he can dismantle Tadevosian and make a real impression. Good first round from the Nottingham fighter. Don't He's building up uh, quite a following in his region. home city of Nottingham, Carl Froch, the 29-year-old. And how about that for a first round? Yeah, that was an impressive start. I mean, he thought Ball what he was doing, ten, nothing reckless seven. whatsoever. Didn't take a punch himself. So, he's in the right frame of mind tonight. Second of 12. Second of 12. Vital super middleweight contest. Carl Froch in his uh, traditional black and silver with Cobra, his nickname on the waistband and the red and white of Sergei Tatavosian, who's 34 and in his 34th fight. He's lost seven, but he has mixed with better fighters than Froch, and that's why they've taken this. Look at that long jab the reach that Froch has. Big for a super middleweight. Yeah, and that may just be the problem, that, or the biggest problem that Tassavoshin had, the fact that he's been a middleweight for so long. He's not a puncher, so you wonder, can he make any impression physically on, on Froch? He did stop Rudy Markerson in seven rounds. The Danish super middleweight hope. But a bit of an upset that was. And Froch is settling well here, looking for body shots too. Concentration etched on the face of Froch. He's not messing about. He sometimes does that. No, I said that at the end of the opening round. He looks to be in the, the proper frame of mind. Uh, concentration, I think he's paid full respect to Tadavosian. 
just waiting for the opportunities. He's not going looking for them. We've plenty of time here, 12 rounds. I think Tatavoshin felt his power in the opening round. That little right hand clipped to the chin. I think it's just made him a little bit weary, so he's not quite so keen to be adventurous. He's trying to, to edge his way into a little chess match at the moment. Was talk of Froch possibly fighting the European champion Debye Gogia, but uh, Tatavosian's got a win over Gogia, so maybe this is an even better match. Froch winding up the punches and delivering them. Looks on form. Oh, down goes Tatavosian in the second round. And there's the power of Karl Froch. 16 knockouts. Tadavosian says he's OK. But Froch is a very good finisher. Backing up Tadavosian. He's making some statement here. The Russian's never been stopped. He has been now. It is all over in two rounds. And Karl Froch makes an impact that will send shockwaves around the world. Super middleweight, he has arrived in fight number 21 in better class. Yeah, well, I did say that it's a performance that's going to be compared with previous opponents. This guy's never been stopped before. I will say a man of his experience, I don't know if the referee acted a little bit quickly, he hadn't taken another clean shot since the knockdown. He was stooping low, he was bobbing and weaving, ducking and diving. But having said that, when, when the fight was stopped and he stood up, he didn't look all that upset about it and being stopped. But uh, it could maybe go on a little bit longer, but you can't argue with that. The guy's never been stopped, he's been in with world class. Froch does it in a couple of rounds. He looked totally in command from the opening bell. Yeah, he actually looked at a different weight class altogether. I mean, he looked so much bigger, so much stronger. And that was a beautiful punch that sent him over. I probably robbed him of the ambition. As I say, when he got back up again, he was ducking and diving, surviving. He wasn't throwing anything back. He wasn't in a position to. A man of his experience, maybe the referee could have seen where it was going to go. But as he gets up here, you can see he is badly shaken. That was a beautiful punch. We think there were 14 unanswered shots after the knockdown. Yep, unanswered punches, but I don't think any of them were clean. They were on the top of his head. I mean, this is what you have to do. When you're hurt, you have to survive. He was bobbing, he was weaving, he was trying to survive. So it's debatable, could it have been allowed to go on a little bit longer? But, uh, as I say, when the referee did stop it and he stood up here, he didn't look as though he was protesting. He actually looked quite relieved. So, at the end of the day, the referee's job is to <laughs> stop it before damage is done. So maybe the right thing's been done. Lucien Boutte, who's ranked seven in the world, could not stop Sergei Tatavosian. Karl Froch did it in two rounds. Brilliant performance. Ladies and gentlemen, after two minutes and 44 seconds of round two, in the interest of Sergei Tatibozian's own safety, the referee has stopped the contest. The winner, and still undefeated in 21 contests, Karl the Cobra Froch! And ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciations for Russia's Sergei Tatibozian. Carl, Tatavoisi never stopped before. Do you feel you made a real statement to your rivals this evening? Um, yeah, definitely. I, that would have definitely sent a message over to all the other super middleweights in the world. I mean, I think it was only eight weeks ago, Tatavoisi took the guy that's above me with the WBC, Lucian Boutte, the Canadian. He took him 12 rounds and he, he gave him a few problems, um, especially late on in the fight. So I, th I thought myself that this fight may, may go to the later rounds, but you've seen it for yourself, the sharpness, the coolness. I put the hard work in the training. And um, it pays dividends when you, when you get down to fight night. Are you coming into your peak now? Oh, definitely. I'm 29 years old. I've got a good five or six years left in my peak. So now's the sort of time we're going to be looking to take over the world. Anyone who's, anyone who's out there who thinks it can take on the Cobra, they, they need to have a look at that performance and realise what they're going to be up against. Ka Joe Calzaghi, for one, he's in a bit of a rubber match with um, Manfredo um, pretty soon. After that, he should be seriously looking at me as a serious contender. 
but we'll see what happens.